Hello there again, friends. Today is 12-13-2021, and today is vlog number day 16 of the Odin Project. And today's going to be a short one. We're not going to be hitting the text editor today. Um, it's just some um, uh, inspecting HTML and CSS using the F12 dev tools in uh, your browser. Uh, just going over how, how that function functionality works in the overview of that, and that's as far as I got today. Uh, today's Monday uh, the 13th so it's a shorter day usually I don't study at all on Mondays um, but this one was short and sweet so I figured I'd bang out a quick video on it so again this should be short we're not gonna be going into the text editor today just uh, going over um, inspecting HTML and CSS so getting into it here uh, shows up the show shows you the inspector uh, tells you how to open it up uh, you can either right click the an item on the on the browser and hit inspect element or you can press F12 on your keyboard for most uh, platforms including uh, for sure Chrome and uh, and Firefox I'm doing this in Firefox because as you can see my uh, my browser it, the only browser available to me is Firefox by default in uh, Xbuntu and um, I could download Chrome but I didn't so uh, the examples here mostly go over Chrome and the pictures and screenshots are in Chrome I noticed but uh, at the very bottom in the assignments they have a Firefox section so um, I think they do that because they know that the standard build in Xboon 2 doesn't have Chrome in it so basically just kind of going an overview of it uh, goes into inspecting elements so um, it tells you what what that looks like shows you that um, shows you you can highlight things when you um, click over it um, for example we'll go over here um, here is the main Odin page uh, the Odin project uh, landing page and here's the inspector they're just saying like you could highlight over uh, you click this button here to pick an element and you can ho hover over it and it'll show you in the light blue text right here you can see it. I don't know if you can see it on on screen, but I can see it here. But basically, it just b puts a very light shade behind it, so you can see what uh, element, what in element tag, inspector tag you're on. Um, so you can basically use this to troubleshoot or make changes. Um, and obviously, the changes won't stay. They're just kind of like uh, troubleshooting steps, if you will, or previewing something if you want to do a change. Um, they talk about the elements uh, use an example of hero main heading is the currently applied style showing that uh, overwritten style is marked out with a line in it meaning that there's a CSS rule somewhere that is overriding that um, you can see that in uh, there's the highlight when I, when I clicked on it it put it in dark bold highlight but uh, here you can see the margin bottom to ream to REM was overwritten. Um, uh, it doesn't tell you where that was overwritten from, but you could, you know, piece it together and figure it out if you wanted to. But here's all the different CSS and stuff that's active and stuff that's been um, overwritten. And that's just kind of go over that. Then they go over testing styles in the in in inspector and. Um, that would be again these are shown in uh, Chrome so the tabbing is a little bit different Firefox so <coughs> um, let's see so here <coughs> it would be inspector um, they're calling theirs um, Chrome calls their styles um, but here's here's where your styles are anyway um, so it's not exactly perfect, but it gives you gives you the point there. Um, testing styles uh, just goes over that, and then there's a couple assignment articles uh, that go over uh, the nitty gritties of what the different uh, menus are. Um, you have inspector, council, debugger, network, style editor, performance, memory, storage, accessibility, and application, and it goes over each and every one of them. And this one's cool. This one's um, responsive design modes if you click this I didn't I never messed with any of this so like I said being a noob to uh, web dev world this uh, this is all new to me I mean I knew that this 
this F12 existed, but I've never played with it, so definitely didn't know this. That's cool that you can see this on a tablet and see how this would, um, or a phone, how this would show up on uh, non, basically non full screen devices, um, non PCs or whatever, if you will. Um, so, and then here it goes into some articles. Uh, here's the Firefox users, so that's what I'm using. So I went through these three here. The first one's the dev tools, this one here, and this goes into the core of uh, what we just seen. So it says, uh, it basically defines what some of these buttons are. There's your responsive design mode. It toggles it. Uh, you can take a screenshot with that. Um, this uh, displays iframes. Uh, this three ellipses opens up the um, extra menus that include other things. And of course, X closes the dev tools uh, application uh, module or snap on whatever you want to call this thing. And then you have <coughs> you have page inspector. Um, and I think that's a, uh, yeah, that's essentially what we're already on. Talks about that. Talks about the different. Um, so here's your layout section. This would be like. Uh, box model showing your current box model that you're on and the size of it and the margin and the borders and the padding and all that and then your CSS in the middle and HTML is on your left um, and then it goes into the web console which this basically um, can help you with seeing logged messages and how they interact with JavaScript which we haven't gotten to yet but um, it still nevertheless goes over it so this is some of the warnings not really errors but just warning messages um, we haven't learned about really any of that yet so I'm not too worried about that that goes into debugger mode if you want to if this is if you're having a problem with JavaScript and you want to debug it without uh, being in the code editor I'm sure we'll learn down the or the text editor I'm sure we'll learn down the road why that's like that or why you'd want to do that for application purposes because I would suspect that um, um, you, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but I suspect there's a reason for doing a debugger outside of the... Um, I think one of the main things, I read it somewhere, is that the main benefit of doing stuff like this out here is that you can break things, uh, modify things, save things, but they save to your local hard drive um, and not out to the production environment. So basically when you refresh the page, everything will literally go back to the way it was. <coughs> so... The benefit of doing that, obviously, is you can kind of test different things out and you can get responsive, immediate uh, feedback from the browser. Uh, and then you can, imp and then if you like what you just created, you can implement that in the uh, text editor um, and save it out and publish it. So uh, that's essentially what I got from it. Is And then you have network monitor here. Um, I'm more I'm a little familiar with this because I have a networking background again I have 13 years in IT experience as a sysadmin and app admin so and some networking experience so I have a general understanding of this network monitor uh, which is here and how that works I've already ran some of this stuff once for sake of speed so I won't run it again but so I ran it and basically everything uh, get commands or get methods um, are ran and then there's a couple that are blocked which is uh, Facebook Java, uh, .js is JavaScript we haven't went over this yet but I'm just precursoring it um, it's a tracking um, script but it didn't run probably because I am incognito mode on this um, uh, so I didn't have to be logged on so I could check the this check the page out and check it against what the screenshots were on the homework so I could you know make sure I was looking at the same thing and then this JavaScript was blocked as well for uh, tracking, uh, probably because, like I said, cookies are off. So because I'm in incognito, so that's probably why it failed. Um, and then you have performance tools. Uh, this basically just goes over um, the different speeds of things. So I'm not recording. Um, actually, I am recording. That's that's kind of crazy. How am I still recording? Um, stop recording by entering space into the council. Okay. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, 
anyway this is kind of what that looks like so I'll have to go back and look at this but it, you can actually record your session to see how long it takes for your page to load and the elements inside the page to load this is what it would look like when you're when you're uh, done running it the responsive web design mode we went through that already accessibility inspector this is uh, right here and this allows just kind of cool it allows you to go to different it does different checks to make sure that you're basically 503 compliant uh, for screen readers and all that and I just dug into here earlier to find one that failed and I did find one uh, was it this one here maybe uh, yes <clears throat> so if you hover over it's actually this ironically it's this chat box it says it does not meet WCAG standards for accessible text so basically is warning you saying the text is it either isn't there or it's saying it's too large <clears throat> um, static text so I'm thinking that it might be thinking that that bubble image is text if I had to guess yes on that um, I don't know but just one I'm sure there's other um, problems on the page but that's the only one that I've seen um, just at a quick glance but anyway keep moving here uh, additional application um, panel and I'm not exactly sure it says provides tools for inspecting and debugging modern web pages um, this includes inspection of service workers and web app manifest I don't really know what that I'm not gonna lie to you I don't really know what that means or if that's important at all um, it is right here um, didn't see anything wrong with the manifest it shows some icons so uh, um, service workers says no service workers found so again, we didn't, we haven't went through really much of any of this. It's just getting you familiar with the dev tools um, and how they work. And then this one goes into the style editor. Um, basically, a little more. It's it's a short little article, but basically it goes into a deeper dive on styles, the media sidebar. Um, there's a little video that I won't play, but it basically goes into what that looks like. So the style, the style. Um, sorry flipping around you too much the style editor here so in the next section we'll actually add rules so actually you can um, it, you can actually create your own CSS on the fly here it won't save unless you save it locally but you'd hit plus here add your rule like you know put in whatever um, you can actually add you know um, you know just for instance you can add you can actually add a CSS in there, and then um, you actually you could actually save it, um, and you'll save. See, it says save the style to a file. So actually, you'll save it to a file, not on not on the web, but it'll save it to your local hard drive. So in case you come to this page later and you want to troubleshoot, you've already you don't have to retype all this over. You just um, just reenact that. Um, we'll probably go over that. I think that's more for tomorrow's lesson. Um, <clears throat> I believe so we probably won't um, do too much of that here but yeah it's um, yeah so here here it talks about like the different preprocessors like sass less stylus um, that basically generate CSS for you it talks about that it can become a problem because uh, the style editor and different versions of the style editor will try it its best to use a uh, use a pre -pro CSS preprocessor um, map, what they call mapping, to um, give you something in the dev tools that you can actually play with. So here's an example of <clears throat> of SAS. Um, so then the SAS uh, uh, style editor will show you and allow you to edit SAS files rather than the CSS that's generated for them. This is just so that you can actually play with the at the SAS level and not the CSS level. Um, for uh, compatibility purposes so um, and that's about it so I don't want to make this any longer than it needs to be uh, we're about 14 minutes here so so that's kind of cool I think we'll go through this part more tomorrow because this we're gonna get into um, uh, box I think it's bo uh, boxes yeah uh, we're gonna get into uh, um, Sorry. So tomorrow we're going to get into. Is it, I think it's called. Yeah, box model. Sorry. Yeah, we're gonna get into the box model. So I think we'll do that. Um, this little exercise tomorrow probably. 
uh, where you, it gives you an example of putting boxes around everything uh, as just a style editor and it just does it on the fly. This didn't work uh, for some reason, but I'm not going to troubleshoot it now to make this video any longer. But um, anyway, that is it for today. I hope you uh, enjoyed the, the journey with me today and learned a little bit about the uh, developer tools as I did and about the, um, you know, the different things you can do with it. Um, and the style editor and being able to take a peek at things um, and inspect and see what's where and how it's set up and just uh, learning purposes and troubleshooting of course so with all that said I'll catch you on the next one see ya